What's going on everybody? Today's video is going to be about flathead catfish and bank analysis, but also how to choose what bank to even begin. So I made a couple of polls recently. Uh, one of the questions I asked is what was the most frustrating about fishing for flathead catfish? Something like, I think it was like 70% of you or something said just finding them uh, was the hard part. Um, I kind of expected that to be the answer. I also expected that maybe like the inconsistency of the flathead catfish just you know be you could be in the right place all of the time and doing all of the right things and still not consistently catching them I thought that would probably be it but really it was just people finding them uh, today we're gonna do something I'm gonna show you a couple of banks uh, I'm gonna show you one bank in particular where I basically take four pictures and it's just like a big three-dimensional or lecture like 180 uh, degree view of this entire bank so the entire way from your left to the all the way to your right and I'm also I also made a little drawing for you guys using the paint program just to kind of give you an understanding of if you guys couldn't see what I was talking about you you will get a very good visual uh, of what that bank actually looked like so and I'm gonna tell you exactly all of the places that you should be looking at both daytime and for nighttime fishing for flatheads where do you put your baits how far out do you put them what depth are you looking for? I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you get something out of it. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first image that I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna look at it right alongside you guys. I've got my phone right here and I can look at it. And I'm gonna be showing you guys, this is basically just an understanding of how this bank works, how the current works. So the first image I'm about to show you guys right here is, this is the far left side of this bank. This is, if you're standing there and you're looking at the water, this is directly to your left. Now, the way the current moves down this bank is very interesting. It's technically part of the outside bend, okay? It's a very subtle bend, but it meets a point right here that you're looking at, and then all of a sudden the current just shoots out. I'm really sorry about the wind, by the way. If it's blowing against the camera and making noise, I apologize. So, but anyways, the current shoots out into the middle of the river. Like, it, it, it stops following along that outside bend bank, and literally, literally just shoots right out into the middle of the river. And immediately right here in front of you is, is like an eddy is created, right? It's dead water. It's actually flowing backwards on the river, but very, very slowly. Here is an image of that river and the current as it's actually flowing. Now, as you can see, that water is moving uh, from left to right, and it's you can see that current seam out there in the middle. That current seam is a very interesting piece of water. Those are always things that you should be looking at. Fish of all different types like to stack up along those areas because it allows them to sit in, in, in water that isn't moving with relative ease. They're not spending very much energy while watching bait and other things come to them just on the outside or the inside of that current seam. The reason why this particular area is important, not that it has necessarily anything to do with the flathead itself, but everything that the flathead eats, okay? In this type of area, right off of this point, you're gonna find things like bait fish, you're gonna find thread fins, you're gonna find gizzard shad, you're gonna find white bass, you're gonna find crappies, you're gonna find bluegills, you're gonna find all species of sunfish, including uh, spotted bass, even smallmouth bass, you're gonna find all kinds of stuff. Even walleyes are gonna be in places like this. And it is because of that that you will also find flatheads there. Now, this is more of a daytime location. Now I'm going to show you another another picture. Now this is a picture that's basically just, you know, panned over about 30 degrees, right? And here you can see that current flowing quite quite well and it, and it just goes straight out into the middle of the river. This whole area in front of you that isn't moving, right? You can see this water. Okay, there's a decline. Okay, this is where it starts to get deep. Okay? The interesting part, the, one of the places that you need to not ignore if you see something like this is right where that starts to fall off. A lot of fish, especially catfish, will sit right on the front of that, just below the plateau that is created by that outside current, right? So anytime you see a dip, okay, find out which way that the current is going in relation to that dip and fish right on the front of it. Okay, a lot of fish will stack up right along the front of those. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time right here on this particular part because this isn't an area, this is an area I would drop a bait for five, 10 minutes and leave. I, I would not stay here. It's interesting, it, it's different. Uh, that's why I wouldn't ignore it. 
but it's not someplace I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna sit there all night right okay this next image is where it gets interesting so as you can see right out here in front of you this this water that's directly in front of you now this water isn't moving this water isn't moving at all and if it is it's very little and it's actually moving upriver it's moving the opposite way because this is a giant eddy remember that this whole bank here that I'm showing you is is one giant eddy it's huge and it's deep this water right out in front of you 15 to 20 feet okay depth is always relevant to the water that you're fishing some rivers might average 10 to 15 feet so a 15 foot is not deep right that's not deep this river that I fish small rivers okay average two to six to eight feet a 15 to 20 foot hole that's a deep hole okay you need to be mindful of that you need to to pay it its due a number of things hold up in deep holes especially in the summertime when that water gets hot a lot of fish they look for cooler water where is cooler water it's deeper so this whole area out in here in front of me is a big deep hole right a lot of gar a lot of gar hang out in these types of areas it's just it's something that you have to deal with in the daytime i'm fishing there i'm going to be dealing with gar part of the part of the deal okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm basically just going to work my way once i start finding where that water gets deeper i'm literally this is how i'm going to fish it I'm gonna throw a bait in on the very top front side of that dip that we talked about earlier. And then I'm literally every five to 10 minutes going to rotate my baits to the right. And it's gonna get deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm gonna fish close to me, and I'm gonna fish far away from me. And I'm just gonna keep going all the way, all the way. Okay, that's how I'm gonna cover that entire piece of water right there. If that's all that was there, if that's all that was there, that's all you're going to do there. There's nothing else you can do. Okay, that's how you're going to fish that place. So, this next picture, I'm going to show it to you right now. This is the very next to the right 30 degree image, right? I've just panned over about another 20, 30 degrees. So you can see right down that bank line. Now, you're not going to be able to see this very well because of this giant branch that happened to just be sitting in the way and I couldn't do anything about it. So I drew you guys a diagram. I'm going to show you that diagram right now what you're looking at right here we're just going to start from the left and this rock bar right here this is what i was actually standing on uh when I, when I, when you were looking at that original picture this is where i was standing so immediately the first thing that you notice is you have a deep hole that is 15 to 20 feet right out in front of you and there's basically no current there none that's where i'm going to start if, if it's still daylight and you've still got a couple hours of daylight like I did, that's where I'm going to start fishing. This main heavy current that's out there, you can throw out into that and there's nothing wrong with that. There could actually even be some blue cats hanging on it. Right now it's July. Uh, I don't expect anything to be out there really except for some gar, which is pretty much all there was. Uh, there's probably going to be a few really small fish that are out there, some smaller catfish, smaller blues, smaller channels smaller flatheads even they really aren't taking part of the spawn they could be out there on that current scene but i'm not really worrying about them let's let's pretend it's june in indiana or let's pretend it's uh middle of august september right these are like prime times that i i target flatheads so the very first thing we see on that bank as i'm looking down is you have this indention in the bank that goes in i couldn't tell exactly how deep it was but based on the sandbar near it and the bank the way it was sloping i would say it was it went from zero to six feet okay it was about i don't know 20 25 feet wide that is an excellent place to put a bait that is an excellent place to put a bait all night long again everything we're going to talk about from here on out looking at this photo right here this is going to be like your after hours type fishing right this is going to be nighttime and i'm sorry about the wind it was literally not blowing 15 minutes ago anyways so then we go to our next piece which is this beautiful sandbar now these sandbars if you look at that or that other image these sandbars are kind of flat on top and then they just dive straight down into deep water that is like the primo place like that like you when you start thinking of sandbars like you you most sandbars are very flat 
and they go out very gradually and you literally it to get into two feet of water most of the time you've got to launch your baits over 100 feet 120 130 140 feet to get like, like it's, that's just the incline that they're at this is one of those really interesting places that has sandbars that dive deep immediately okay this is the kind of bank you're looking for and these kinds of banks guys these are everywhere if you live in the midwest and you have a rock sand or mud bottom bank these banks are literally everywhere i had to walk about a half mile to find that i had to walk a half mile there's some really really hairy crap and when i got there i realized that i literally walked the most difficult way to get there that you possibly could that's what i did that's just part of the game but anyways this is an excellent place to post up this is an excellent place to sit all night long and i'm going to fish all the way around it i'm going to fish within i'm going to fish within four or five feet of that bank all night long maybe 10 feet maybe 12 but i'm going to stay between four and 10 feet from that bank the whole time it wouldn't even be it you could literally drop a bait in 12 inches of water i don't know how far it would be it probably was 12 inches of water would have been literally a foot probably maybe a foot to two foot off of that sandbar and you would uh, there's a significant chance you would catch a fish i would actually put them out a little bit further but that's not out of the question so what then is immediately beyond that first sandbar you had a little inlet and i didn't put this in the photo but there's actually like a little drainage thing that like spilled in right there uh, so there was like water coming into the river right there and it was making like a little swirl that's another thing that makes this a really interesting place is because things like smaller bait fish will be attracted to that kind of stuff uh, and then you obviously have a little bit larger predatory fish that then flatheads and things like that feed on so the very next big piece of structure is what it's a giant sandbar it's a little flatter a little bit less of an incline coming off of it but it's still got deep water it's still got deep water right there by the sandbar excellent this is another place that you would post up all night long and again you can fish deep you could have if you want if you're one of those people that takes a bunch of poles you take three poles but one of them deep two shallow and you're going to do that anywhere around any of those sandbars anywhere okay i'm talking four to twelve feet from the bank you don't even have to do that you could literally drop the ba the, the bait two feet off of the bank especially if you're using live baits you want to be using live baits here so immediately to the front to the right of that so beyond that if you're looking down the picture you have timber up until this point we have all we, we have described things in the water that are that are really good i really like when i see those kinds of things it's not until you get to the timber all of the timber that is just down river and when i say all of it that timber goes 200 yards down river non-stop and it's thick timber the timber how did how would you say this the timber in that photo along that bank is the straw that stirs the drink right reggie jackson that timber pulls it all together right it, it, if if i only had everything else but the timber it would be an okay spot worthy of exploration It'd be worthy of some time. Yeah, let's put some baits in there. Just see what happens. The timber sets it apart. The Again, these banks are everywhere. They're all over your rivers. Okay, these are the kind of banks you're going to be looking for. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to have all these things. It doesn't have to have timber. It doesn't have to have sandbars. It doesn't have to have deep water. If you've got a combination of two of those things, you're in business. That's all you need. Just two of them. Right? If you have no depth, you have no sandbar, but you got timber and a current seam, you're in business. If you've got a sandbar and depth, you're in business. If you've got depth and a current seam, you're in business. Put two of those things together in any order, in any order, and you've got a decent bank. You've got a bank that is worthy of exploration, that is worthy of your time. You need to throw a bait in there. Okay, so just based on everything we just talked about, Let's put some arrows on some places I would throw a bait. I would put a bait here. 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 And here. Those are all the places that I would put baits. I would put baits in all of those places. Not all at the same time, but if I was looking at this from a nighttime perspective, let's say it's, it's 8.30, 9 o'clock, and I'm getting ready to throw my baits in, ready for dark. 
those are all the places I'm going to throw my baits. One of those baits is getting eaten. If I had to guess, I would say right here along this timber line, this is where, this is where those fish are going to come from. Okay, a lot of those fish are either going to be in this deeper water out here. And at that point, there's really nothing you can do about it after dark. They're either going to come to you or they're going to go up river. They're going to go to one of those places. It's really a 50-50. And it's the same with the fish in this timber. But given the type of structure that you have just up river from all that timber, I would say there's a good chance that anything that's living in that timber is coming your way. There's a good chance that's the case. And another thing, there is no current there. There's very little to no current in that whole place. So that fish could go anywhere for any reason. Likely, it's upriver to your bait. So let's take a look at the thumbnail of this video really quick. This, where I caught that big fish was a prime example of all of these things coming together. Okay, I knew that fish would be there. Or, or if that fish was gonna be anywhere in that area, it was gonna be there, okay? It just so happens that that bank happened to lend itself very well to that kind of fishing like like i knew immediately that the easiest place to fish was also going to be the best place to fish um if you look at that video if you look at the photo uh, basically that fish was caught in about 18 inches of water maybe two feet you had a current break that was to our left uh, where the water was moving significantly faster there was one piece of timber right on that break uh, i wasn't concerned with that though i didn't care about it uh, i was worried about all the timber that was down uh, down the bank and I knew there was a big fish in there there had to be and it was going to come up river more than likely guys I really hope you enjoyed this video I apologize for the wind it's all I've got if you guys have any questions please feel free to write them in the comments I respond to all of you I respond to all your all your comments every one of them uh, I love it when you guys comment I think it's I think it's awesome I love having these conversations there's really nothing that I want to do more than talk about flathead fishing or, or channel cat fishing or really anything that has to do with fishing. I really enjoy it all. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe to the video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.